Today we are going to be, sorry, we're going to be in the book of, uh, I believe it's second, if I can get this uh, going here. Today we're going to be in the book of Second Timothy, chapter number three, and we're going to read the uh, first five verses there. But before we do that, uh, this is this is the the second message in a um, in a group of uh, of messages that um, you know that that I've called you know grow the church or build the church. Now, I'm not talking about the physical building. This building has already been been built but the thing in order to build the church as far as the people goes and we are the temple of the holy spirit in order to do that we have to have a strong foundation and so what, what we're doing is where god sets those into place and so what i like for us to do if, if you can't stand but i want you to say this with me if we could all stand for a minute say this with me we're, I'm going to say it so either you believe it and receive it, and this is what I want to say. And this is what you're saying about yourself. You can repeat this after me. I am a foundational, I am a foundational and functional pillar, and functional pillar upon, which upon which the Lord Jesus Christ, the Lord Jesus Christ can build his church. So we're going to say it one more time. I am, I am a, foundational a foundational and functional, and functional pillar, upon pillar upon which the Lord Jesus Christ, Lord Jesus Christ can, build can build his church. Whose church is it? Jesus' church. Amen. Okay, you can be seated. We are, we are the pillar. And, and, and here, but, but here's the, the thing I want to get to here. In, in the book of 2 Timothy, and hopefully we're all there. Chapter number 3, we're going to start with verse 1. It says this, it says, But realize this, that in the last days, now I don't know if we're in the last days or not, but all I know is that each day that goes by, we're closer to the last days. Amen. I mean, you, we, there's a lot, a lot of debate about that. I'm not here to, to get into that discussion but it says this, in the last days, difficult times will come. For men will be lovers of self, lovers of money, boastful, arrogant, revilers, disobedient to parents. Man, we, we should have kept the children up for that one. <laughs> disobedient to parents, ungrateful, unholy, Unloving, incompa incompatible, malicious, malicious gossips, without self-control, brutal, haters of good, treacherous, reckless, conceited, lovers of pleasure rather than lovers of God, holding to a form of godliness although they have, they have denied its power. And it, and it says this, avoid such men as these. Heavenly Father, I come before you in the name of Jesus, Lord God, and I thank you for your anointing. I thank you for your word, Lord God. I thank you that you've called me, Lord God. And I pray that one more time, this is your servant, Lord, asking for you to anoint my lips to deliver your word to your people. Father, give us ears to hear, Lord God. I pray that this word would, would be in, engrafted and ingrained in our heart, Lord God, and that in due season, this word will speak. Lord, we give you glory and honor in all things. In Jesus' name, amen. Now, now, now when we begin to read this scripture, I think that the tendency is to look at those things and we, we, we generally begin to think about other people. But I want to remind you that the Apostle Paul is writing this letter to Timothy, the, 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 the pastor. And, and he was saying, you know, we, we, and so when we read those, the, that litany, that list of things, 
I, I believe there are some things that we read there and we could say, oh my. Or we could say, oh me. You know, and, and so if we, if we really are true and honest with ourselves, because here's the thing, we can have a form of godliness. You can come in here and you can wear a smile and you can shake hands and you can do all the right, go through all the right motions, but not have the power of God in your life that will produce the necessary change that needs to happen. Because this is what I know about the power of God. It's a transforming power. If we allow it to take root, if we allow it to, to, to penetrate the callousness of our heart, it is a, it's truly a transforming power. And if we, really get, if we really get a hold of that concept, when Jesus said, hey, don't worry about the, the, the speck in your brother's eye, but take care of the forest that's growing in yours, that, real, that scripture, the, the church will be a healthier place and a better place that the world will be envious of. Because it's the transforming power. You know, you know we, we can, we can what, what we say a lot of times, we can play church. But, but, but the Bible wants us to be the church. He wants us to be his hands and his feet. To walk in love, to let the light of God shine in our lives, to, to do the things that he wants to accomplish through us. See, acts alone are not righteous. Let's say that again. You can write the biggest check this morning and that not be righteous. You might say, well, you know, Pastor, we don't write a check, you don't get paid. The lights don't get, come on. But here's what, I, here's what I'm saying. It's not the act that is righteous, it's the motivation. And, and, it, and in that motivation, is, it comes down to a heart condition. Our heart to serve, our heart to to. to, to be the best, that we're serving the best. How great is our God? How wonderful is he? All the things that he's done in our lives, even as we testified this morning, look at all the greatness. Just the fact that you're breathing this morning, that you're here and that you're alive and that God means that God still has a plan and a purpose for you in this place. So many times I think we lose track of those things that, that he wants us to do. I, instead, we look at those things that we want to do. You know, I want to be in Key West, Florida right now. I even have a name of the church, Keys to the Kingdom. Who all wants to go there and help me plant that church? <laughs> but there's a place that God has called his people. There's a place that God has, there's a place that he has placed you to utilize your giftings and your talents to grow the kingdom of God, to be his hands and feet. And we talked about those, those, we started talking about those pillars uh, last, last uh, Sunday. And I just want to review the first two, and then I'm going to get into the third one here. technology. So the first pillar was this. It was found in 1 Corinthians chapter 12, verse 27. Now you are the body of Christ and, and individual members of it. So, so remember, as the body, we are the body of Christ, and we each have a role. Some are an eye, some are an ear, some are a hand. And, and we talked about if, if one part, and that's why we said I am a foundational and functional. We talked about being a functional member. You know, if, 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 you're, you know, if your leg stops working and you have to get from here to there, it's a little bit harder if you got to drive that thing and, and carry it with you. But the same thing's true in the body of Christ. If, if any of, it, of our members stop 
working or functioning in the giftedness in the area where God has called us, then the, as a body, we become dysfunctional. So we keep our individuality even though we are in this greater, uh, this greater thing called the body of Christ. And here, First Christian Church is a body of Christ, but part of a bigger body, meaning the believers that are meeting in other places this morning all across this country and around the world. So, so that, that's, the, that's, the, that, that's the first pillar. The second pillar was that we would be, we would be unified with one purpose, with one plan, with one, with, one, with, one, with one goal in mind. And that goal is Jesus Christ, resur- Jesus Christ resurrected. Telling people about the love of Christ. Encouraging and exhorting one another to be the best that we can be in him. And so this week we're going to get into the, the, next, uh, the, the next phase of this. And I want to read this to you. This is what I hope is the, is the prayer of our heart. Is this, I will not let my church be about my preferences and desires. Less of me and more of Christ. Less of me and more of you, Jesus Christ. Less of what I want. Less of what I want to do. And it has to be my way or the highway. The problem in the church is we have a bunch of Frank Sinatra Christians. We're going to do it my way. But God wants us to do it his way. And when we do it his way and we stay in him, that's where our protection is. I remember a song that we used to sing. I hope none of you leave after this, but, but, but this song, used, it used to really touch my heart. The name of the Lord is a high tower. And all those that run to him may be what? Saved. The name of the Lord is a high tower that the righteous run into and they are saved. Righteous means that we we allow the, the, the great physician to take out those desires in our heart for selfishness and put in the, in the heart of serving one purpose and one plan, serving Christ and serving one another. That's what, that's what the third the third pillar is all about. That's the third ingredient of being a member of the body of Christ is that we are not looking, it's not about us anymore. Because if Jesus Christ can endure it, endured everything on the cross for us, who are we not to endure the things that we need to face on a daily basis for him and the purpose of his kingdom? So many times we get sidetracked by our earthly and and selfish desires. But God wants to move. He wants to grow because there are people. It said, said, we read that in, in, in in 2 Timothy there in chapter number three. That in the last days, people will seek. It's cut. You know, I, I, I talked to somebody this morning. I can't remember. They said, man, I, I didn't want to even get up this morning. You know, but you did. You got here. You fought through all of that, all the muck and the mire, all the, of the world and all the fighting and all the things that, that, that the world wants to dictate to what the church should be. But the, but, but the Bible, the B-I-B-L-E, that book is enough for me. The Bible, I always said, is an acronym that stands for basic instructions before leaving this earth. Because here's the thing, that Bible will do us no good up in heaven. And the only part of it that's working for you today is the part that you allow him that you believe. And this is why I say we have to get in the word and we have to, we, we, it, it takes putting our own desires down. It takes, you know, most of us, we, we eat at least three, maybe two, at least one meal a day. 
But how many times do we feel, feed our spiritual man? Do we get in that word? Do we get in that prayer time with him? Do we get in that worship time with him? It's not just a Sunday morning thing for a little bit of time and then we go and, 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 and live like the world the rest of the week. But he wants, it's a transforming power if we allow it to happen. The, the next thing in, in this uh, pillar is as a member of this church, I will look to serve Christ and others, not my personal desires or ambitions. That's why I appreciate people this morning like Pastor Kevin. I know that he could go pastor church probably anywhere in this valley. But he, but, but he, but he said, you know what, I'm, I'm, I'm with you. I'm here, and I'm, 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 sir, I'm here to serve the kingdom of God because God called me to help and to, and, to, and to build the kingdom with you. You know, these are the things that are happening in our midst. Not, you know, you know, I'm sorry I'm picking on you this morning, Pastor Kevin, but he's not serving his, his own personal agenda and desires. Now, here's the thing, and I, and I said this last week, that doesn't mean he's perfect. That doesn't mean I'm perfect. We're a bunch of imperfect individuals, and the only but we serve a perfect God. And if, we, and if we get our eyes off of our imperfections and get our eyes on the perfection that is found in Christ Jesus and continue to strive and encourage and exhort one another to live that way, Silver doesn't have a chance but to be born again. This area doesn't have a chance but to be born again. People be walking down the street and, be, and come in here and not even know why they're in, in this building. I've seen it happen. When God's people, because God said, where my people dwell together in unity, there he commands his blessing. That means you don't even have to pray for it. See, we're so busy praying sometimes we don't take the time to obey. We'd rather pray than obey the word of God. Come on now. Now, and I'm not even quite sure we're doing enough praying. It's like, Pastor, you know, you know, you call, a, you know where you're at as a church if you call an eat meeting and see who shows up, and then you call a prayer meeting and see who shows up. If more people start showing up at the prayer meeting than the eat meeting, that means God's doing something. Now, don't get me wrong, I like to eat. Invite me to the eat meeting. But also, I want to pray. I'm going to get a hold of God. Because in that time is where he gives us the instruction to grow his church. Not Nate Freeman's church. Not First Christian Church. I mean, that's the name. But his church. The place that he, ha that is, that, that he has set aside for the, and dedicated it for his purpose. And I want to remind us with Matthew chapter 6. Let's go to Matthew chapter 6 real quick. I want to read. I want to read in verse. Um, we're going to go all the way back to. Wait, let's see here. Let's go back. Let's start with verse uh, 30. Okay, Matthew chapter 6, it says, Wherefore, if God so clothe, clothe the grass of the field, uh, which today is, and tomorrow is cast into the oven, shall he not much more clothe you, O ye of little faith? Verse 31 says this, Therefore, take no thought, saying, what shall we eat, or what shall we drink, or what, what, or wherewithal shall we be clothed? Verse 32 says this, it says, For after all these things do the Gentiles seek. 
For your heavenly Father knoweth that ye have need of all these things. What does that tell us? No matter what you're going through, no matter what you're facing, no matter what your family is going through, no matter what your, your extended family is going through, God already knows the need. So if he knows the need, the scripture that rings out in my head is this. We have not because we ask not. Because we're not seeking him in his way. We're trying to figure out in our own minds of how to get the desired result that we want. But if we humble ourselves before God and allow him to speak to our hearts, if we sit and be still, but that word doesn't mean sit and be still and do nothing. That word means to sit and be still and do what? Listen to the instruction of the Lord. See, we're not going to grow this church because I can preach good. We're not going to grow this church because we have a choir or, 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 or Mary Ellen can play the organ or Trey can sing or because we're live streaming the service. We're going to build this church the way that they built the church in the book of Acts, which I like to call the book of action. And they went out in what? They spoke the word of God. They became the word of God. They became the church to the people. And it said that those who heard did what? They believed. They believed. They believed. And then what? When they came in, they came to a, a functional body that's healthy and moving. And, 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 and there's a place for them to, what, begin to serve and bring their giftings and their talents and their things to the kingdom of God. I know I've been told I can tell a cat story that would make a dog cry. I know Mary Ellen can play that organ like nobody's business. And I know that my son is anointed to sing. And I know that our videos and stuff last week's service, we had over a thousand people view our Sunday service. We touched a thousand people from right here in this place. But all that means nothing if we don't become the church. If we don't walk in the love of Christ and handle things the way that the Bible says to be. Because here's the thing. When God calls, he equips. When God's involved, he, 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 he performs it because he already knew. He knew that he knew when you were, when this church was believing to keep its doors open, he already knew the need. So, so, so now we're, we're, we're in that time, we're in that hour. Now it's time to begin. But I, but I, wanna, I, wanna, I, wanna, I, wanna, I want us to look at this scripture in verse six, Matthew chapter 6, the next verse in 33. It says, but seek ye first. First seek what? The bylaws? First seek ye the, the members that used to attend seek Oprah Winfrey. No, that's not in there. <laughs> seek first who? The kingdom of God and his what? Righteousness. Righteousness is the intention of the heart. That doesn't mean we're perfect. That means that because of the blood of Jesus and the perfecting power of that blood, that we now become what? Righteous, even though yet we were, we were sinners. So, so first seek the kingdom of God and his righteousness, meaning that we need to continue to stay in communion with God, to search the deep recesses of our heart, to check our motives, 
to see why it is that we do what we do and how we go about what we do in a day and in, 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 in a week and in an hour. It says this, and all these things shall be added unto you. Everything that we need. Everything that, the, that, that we need both individually and collectively at the church. If we first seek the kingdom of God, all these other things will be added unto us. We'll have to have two choirs because there's not enough seats up here. We'll have to, we'll, we'll have to, there'll be people sitting back here if we do what? First seek the kingdom of God. Not our own, not even, I, I mean, I've seen, as far as numbers go, I've seen success. I mean, my wife and I were on staff of a church that had over 10,000 members. And not, we weren't just on staff like, and I mean, I did start out as a janitor. But we were, we were in the inner sanctum of that ministry. We, we, know what, we know what works. But all that does, does no good because we have to do what God is saying to do here and now. That doesn't mean there isn't things that we can't learn from the past that we bring forward, but we have to do what needs to be done in this moment, in this hour, by who? What God says do. There's no magic formula. It's, it, they, they've been doing church for 2,000 2, years. They did it before I was born. We were here, and they'll do it until Jesus comes back. I have a pretty good track record. As far as I know, Jesus is undefeated. Never lost. So it's us that has to line up with him. All these things will be added unto us. So I want to I wanna um, close here with the fourth and final pillar. Now, now this is the part that I'm just gonna read. It says, as a member of the church of Jesus Christ. I will pray for the leadership of our country, city, community, and church. And, and you say, well, what if the leadership is evil? What if, what if I didn't vote for them? What if it's corrupt? Well, let's, let's, let's see. Let's see what... Don't go by what Nate Freeman has to say about it. Let's go to what God has to say about it in 2 Timothy, no, I'm sorry, 1 Timothy chapter 3. 1 Timothy chapter 2, verses uh, 1 through 3. It says, I exhort, therefore, that first of all, supplications, prayers, intercessions, in giving of thanks. I, I want to stop right there. It says in giving of thanks. See, here's one thing that I found out. You can't talk about somebody you're praying for. You can't talk negatively about somebody that you're earnestly and honestly praying for. You can't do both. You know, the, the book of James tells us that both Living water, both blessing and cursing, can't come from the same tongue. Oh, I'm going to stay off of that right now. <laughs> I, ain't, I ain't feeling any love on that one. But it says this, it says, I exhort, therefore, that first of all, supplications, prayers, intercessions, and giving of thanks be made for all men for kings, and for all that are in authority. Now, I don't know, unless you got another translation of the Bible, I don't see any qualifications that they have to be a righteous king. I don't see any qualifications that the leader have, has to be whole. I don't see any qualifications that it says where you voted for the person or, or these things. You know, I, I know that I'm not saying when you pray for somebody, you have to agree with them. 
That's not what it, it's telling us. It's saying pray, but, but, but I'm going to get to, to what it means. It says, for kings and for all that are in authority, that we may lead a quiet and peaceful life. It says, now, you know what? I, during November, during the fall of election season, I believe Christians just lose their mind. And, and God wants us to lead what? A peaceful life. It says right here to pray um, a, to, so that we may lead a quiet and peaceable life in all godliness and honesty. For this is good and acceptable in the sight of God, our Savior. This is what's acceptable, that good and acceptable thing. I agree. I, I mean, we, we pray. I, I mean, we pray during those seasons that, that God would put his people in there, that God would put people with his heart and his mind so that the truth would be, would, 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 would be able to be expounded on it and the truth would not be that we wouldn't have to hide and that, that, that we maintain our freedom in this country to do what we're doing this morning and not proclaim the name of Jesus Christ. And that, that's, that's, that's the fourth pillar. Praying for our leadership. Praying for each other. First Samuel 33 says, God, God forbid that I not pray for you. God forbid it. That we pray for one another. Men and women of God, they don't fall, we let them down. We gotta pray for leadership. We gotta pray for, for people in authority. God will handle all, God will do the correcting. He said, vengeance is mine. We see this clearly with David, with, 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 with Saul. Saul was trying to kill him. I mean, take him out. And God apprehended David and said, I don't want you to touch my anointed. You better be careful of the lines and the things that we touch. You'd be better off praying and obeying what God's word so that we may see because God wants us to lead peaceful lives, full of love and joy. That doesn't mean that we won't get challenged. As long as there's a devil alive, he's going he's to challenge you. He's, and, and the more effective you are, the more he tries to get at you some kind of way. But here's the thing. I'm not telling you that to be afraid. I'm telling you that because you are on the winning side. And you have authority and you have victory and, and, and we have victory in Christ Jesus because he overcame the, the, the evil one. Well, let's, let's stand.